Good morning on this 16th day of February and welcome to the Daily Post where we bring you some scriptures and thoughts and ideas that we hope will help you through the day. The scripture this morning comes from Psalm 17 and verse 7. Show thy marvellous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand, them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. If you're reading the Bible in a year, this morning we need to move on through Leviticus chapters 19 and 20 and Matthew chapter 27 verses 51 to 66. The thoughts of the day. Whatever you do may seem insignificant, but it is most important that you do it. Growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. No matter how much you disagree with your kin, if you are a thoroughbred, you will not discuss their shortcomings with the neighbours. The motivational thought for the day. It is only possible to live happily ever after on a day-to-day -day basis. On this day, in the year 600, on this day, Pope Gregory the Great decreed that the saying, quote, God bless you, unquote, is the correct response to a sneeze. There are many ideas about why that is so. On this day in 1568, the death sentence was passed on the whole country when the Netherlands was condemned for heresy by the Spanish Inquisition. I don't think they were all executed. <coughs> In 1960, on this day, the U.S. nuclear submarine, the USS Triton, began an underwater circumnavigation of the world. And in 2020, on this day, the ghost ship, cargo vessel MV Alta, washed up on the Irish coast near Ballycotton by Storm Dennis after drifting across the Atlantic Ocean from Bermuda. In 2021, Athens and parts of Greece were covered in an unusually heavy snowfall on this day. The personal story of the day. Knowledge protects us from the failures of ignorance. It was dusk. My friend's wife and he had just strolled across the famous Charles Bridge in Prague when a man approached them with a wad of money in his hand. 42 Czech Karunas for one dollar, he said. The official rate was about 35 Karunas for one US dollar. So my friend exchanged 50 dollars for 2100 Czech Karunas. That evening, he told his son about his good fortune. Dad, I should have told you, the son apologised, never exchange money on the street. He looked at the bills, the 100 Karuna note, was a good check bill, but the $2,000 bills were worthless. They looked like check money, but they were in fact Bulgarian notes which were no longer in circulation. He had been deceived and robbed. Satan employs similar tactics. See John chapter 8, verse 44. He capitalizes on the deceitfulness of sin using its passing pleasures, as described in Hebrews 11, verse 25, to hide the pain that always follows. Sin may be attractive, even offering something in and of itself that is good. But behind it is deception. Our best defense against that deception is to have a growing knowledge of God's word. As we follow the psalmist's example, we'll keep from being deceived by sin. In uh, Psalm 119 and verse 11, the psalmist tells us, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. The devotional thoughts of the day. The first, a terrible, terrible time is coming. The scripture from James chapter 1 and verse 15 References from Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 5 to 31. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. 
doctors are increasingly aware that prolonged exposure to psychological strain, such as fear or anxiety, can lead to a host of psychosomatic illnesses. This discovery would have been nothing new for Jeremiah. Living under the shadow of impending invasion, the pit of Jeremiah's stomach ached, as he tells us in verse 19. Yesterday, we looked at the warning to repent. Today, we will see the serious consequences when such warnings are ignored. Today's passage opens with a cry to flee to fortified cities. The coming invasion was inevitable. Like a devouring lion, the Babylonians would destroy everything in sight. Lions were a serious threat in this area during Jeremiah's time. So this imagery would have put real fear in people's hearts. Given the severity of this attack, the only possible response was to wail and lament, as we're told in verse 8. It's not clear from the original Hebrew whether verse 10 reflects Jeremiah's thinking or the conventional wisdom of the time. If these are Jeremiah's thoughts, they show us how deeply troubled he was. It must have seemed to him as if God himself had deceived him. It's likely, however, that false prophets had been crying, Peace! Peace! when in fact disaster loomed. And when disaster came, these false prophets then claimed that God had deceived them, when in reality they had not been listening to him to begin with. The truth was that the winds of destruction were beginning to blow on Jerusalem, verse 11. These hot winds would scorch, making normal activities such as winnowing grain impossible. The impending calamity caused Jeremiah to writhe in pain. Other Hebrew prophets had also suffered because of an impending judgment. But Jeremiah's anguish gives us a look into his sensitive heart. The rest of the chapter offers one of the most powerful descriptions of the Day of Judgment found in the Old Testament. The destruction would be so great that it would be as if the earth returned to its formless and void state before creation. But the creation account in Genesis is followed by the anticipation of life. Here the picture is of destruction. No wonder Jeremiah felt pain in the depths of his being. Like Jeremiah, Jesus also warned people to repent and trust in the Lord before it was too late. In the parable of the wedding banquet, see Matthew 22 verses 1 to 14, Jesus urged his listeners to respond to the gospel. In the warning that might remind us of Jeremiah chapter 4, Jesus said that those who rejected this information would be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 22 and verse 13. The second thought is entitled Betrayal by Brothers, the scripture from Matthew 24 verses 10 to 12. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Love will grow cold even among Christians, brothers or former brothers, who themselves have fallen and abandoned their faith, will out of the bitterness caused by backsliding and jealousy, betray their brothers just like Judas betrayed his master. Perhaps this betrayal among brethren is the most unpleasant of all. We can understand that the world hates us, or that strangers, or even the religious, attack us. However, when formerly warm and caring individuals who used to love and follow the truth try to hide their backslidden condition by betraying those who previously had friendship with them, it can be devastating. Lawlessness will abound, even in the church. People 
will take the law in their own hands and do as they please. Man will make his own laws and be his own master. But this spirit is already active and working to spread out even further. People willingly listen to a talk and want to be blessed or moved by God, but they refuse to obey him. When a brother lovingly corrects us, we become angry and want to retaliate. This desire to get even, to harm those we believe have hurt us, is the very spirit that brings on betrayal. Perhaps this is the most tragic of all sins. But even for this, there is forgiveness. There was no hate or bitterness in Jesus' eyes when Judas kissed him. After all, it was not surprising that even those who hate us still know how to kiss Jesus Christ. Just a lighter moment for today. A teacher was giving a lesson on blood circulation and trying to make the matter clearer. The teacher said, now students, if I stand on my head, the blood, as you know, will rush to my face and I should turn red in the face. Is that correct? And the unanimous chorus was, yes, sir, the boy said. Then why is it, asked the teacher, while I'm standing upright in an ordinary position, my feet don't turn red from blood. It didn't take but a split second for little Johnny to say, it's because your feet aren't empty. <laughs> the facts of the day. By law, every child in Belgium must take harmonica lessons at primary school. It's physically impossible for pigs to look up into the sky. I'm sure they've tested that. <laughs> A closing thought for today. Lord, give me an insight so I can understand my true value the way you see me. Thank you, Lord, for that. We thank you for being with us today. We hope that you'll join us again tomorrow morning and that the Daily Post will be helpful to you through the day. In the meantime, have a blessed day. Bye for now.